Good evening, and welcome to the second episode of the Night Owl Knits podcast. My name is Katie, and I'm also known as Night Owl Knitter on Ravelry. I hope you guys are all doing fantastic this evening. I, um, it hasn't been quite a week since I last posted, but I'm hoping um, to make Monday nights my uh, recording nights. So figured why not start right away while I'm at it and I'm at home doing nothing. <laughs> um, so I, a little bit about my podcast, we'll be talking about um, knitting primarily, um, but just about life and um, different hobbies as is. Um, we'll probably just take it as a, you know as it comes and we'll see where it takes us. So let's start, um, let me start with talking about my, um, what's on my needles. I, since the last time I posted, I have not, um, gotten much further on both my unicorn stripe and my, um, Danish forest. I spent too much time knitting other stuff or, um, doing other stuff. But, um, I am, if you tuned in last episode, if you did, awesome, thank you for coming back, um, if this is your first time stopping by, um, welcome, I'm so happy to have you here. This is the Danish Forest, it's by, um, Marty L. Doy, it's a free pattern on Ravelry, I am knitting with, um, some prime alpaca that I got from the Shady Haven Fiber designs. Um, I got this at Wisconsin Sheep and Wool in 2013. I hadn't known what, I didn't know what to do with it um, until a few weeks ago. And I just fell in love with Alpaca again. Um, it's just so squishy. And who doesn't love soft squishy yarn? So I found this, um, it's going to be a cowl. It's knit back and forth though. And then you can see I have my provisional cast done and the bottom there and I am going to connect it to be a nice squishy cowl. So I don't think I knit on this at all this last week, um, which sucks. I really wish I would have made time to knit on it this week for sure. Um, and then the other project, I guess it would be like a long term project that I have on my needles is my unicorn stripes. It's a paid for pattern on Ravelry. Um, I believe it's uh, by Antonia Shankland. Um, sorry, my screen went away for a second. Um, by Antonia Shankland, and this is I'm working on purple right now. I know my lighting sucks. I'm really gonna work on that. Um, but this is going to be a scarf, and I am. I think I was still on the purple last time I recorded so I really didn't get very far this is just really um, mindless knit for me in the round because it's all basically stocking it um, so hopefully I will be able to work on that as well this week if I don't cast anything else on um so those are the two uh, works and projects that I have I am now going to share with you my finished object last time I recorded I had one mitt now, I have two. I am knitting with some Malibu Rico Arroyo, and it's so soft. I just, I kept on just, you know, petting it, and how awkward does that sound, um, as I was knitting with it. And this is this, um, lace, uh, pattern. It kind of ma it's kind of going to match the, um, Danish forest cowl. So I plan on having these gloves go with that. And then I also have enough yarn to make a hat that hopefully I can find a pattern um, to go with that as well. And just have a nice set. 
I um, chose this pattern in this color. This is the Jupiter um, color from Malabrigo um, for the um, Harry Potter house cup. Um, one of the classes, um, one of the assignments was to knit something um, kind of that reminds you of autumn colors, and I think this um, this kind of, I mean, this red reminds me of, you know, trees turning, and I know the picture um, isn't great, it's maybe just a little bit lighter than what's shown on the screen, um, but I, so yeah, I'm going to be turning these in for, um, I think it's Habitat of um, Magical Creatures class. Um, so that's my one finished object. I worked on most of these, these uh, most of the weekend. Um, and then the other, or the second one, most of the weekend. The other finished object, um, this is really, I, I shared it with you, the pair last week. Um, these are my socks. I um, was finally able to weave in all the ends. Because I hate weaving in ends. Who doesn't hate weaving in ends? But I was like very, very, um, just, I was weaving in the ends purposely this time. And I was really impressed. I'm like, oh, I don't know where I weaved them in. How exciting. Um... So these are going to be turned in for detention on um, the Harry Potter House Cup on Ravelry. So I will have two assignments to um, turn in. I'll probably do that either tonight or tomorrow. So I want to cast on another pair of socks. I didn't think I'm like, I'm done. I'm done with socks. Um, at least for a while. But, I don't know, they're easy, they're mindless, I can take them wherever without having to, you know, lug around um, either my iPad or some paper and pen to figure out where I am in the pattern because it's just knit, 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 knit. And if I'm going to do the heel, I'm going to do the heel at home um, just so I can focus because I hate doing heels. Um, although... Um, the socks, uh, the pattern I used for those socks was the French Vanilla Cappuccino, um, heel, uh, or pad sock pattern by C.C. Elman, who also, um, hosts the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast. Um, I love this sock pattern, and, uh, the heel is so, it's easier for me to, um, comprehend and understand what I'm doing. So I'm excited to knit my second sock with that pattern. And so those are the only um, projects I have in mind or I am currently doing. I did go to Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival on Friday afternoon and I acquired many, many yummy yarn, yarny um, acquires. I don't know, that doesn't make sense. Sorry, I forget words sometimes, so just bear with me. Um, but I just got a lot of yumminess. I got two skeins of... Just one second, they're right over here. Okay, here they are. They're right next to me. Um, these are Bumblebee Acres Fiber Farm. Uh, the first skein I got... Um, is the Time Lord colorway, and it's a fingering weight, um, and it has 434 yards. Um, it's Doctor Who inspired, obviously, and this is the first, um, booth that I stopped at, and I looked through their yarns, and there was a lot of them that I really liked, but this one, um, with the blues and the purples, dark purple and some pinks in there. I just, I just had to have it, and so, and at first I was gonna like, okay, I'm just gonna go through both bar, excuse me, both barns, decide, you know, kind of scope out what yarns I like, where I wanna, you know, make my purchases, and then I'll go back and, you know, make the purchases. Purchases. I just had to have it. I had to have it now, and so I. That was my first purchase, and I do not regret it one bit. 
because second time around I decided just as I was getting ready to leave to pick up another skein. Um, different colorway but same booth. Um, this is um, winter is coming but there will be no snow. And I am a huge Game of Thrones fan. I'm a huge Doctor Who fan. And they, this booth, the ladies were really, really, really nice. They were awesome um, just to deal with. And so I was did not regret going back there to get another skein. But all, like, there was just so many um, just fandom-inspired um, yarns there. I know they had some Downton Abbey, some Outlander, um, Harry Potter, um, Doctor Who. I might be missing one or another, um, but I just, it's just so nice. And I, heard, I was told that this one knits up really, really neat. So I am not sure of what I'm going to do with it. These do have um, nylon in it, so I could make socks. But I don't know if something so pretty should be socks. What are you guys' thoughts? Um, for both the Time Lord and the um, Winter is Coming, there will be no snow. Should I do socks? Should I look up a, uh, for a small shawl or scarf? I am open to suggestions. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys. So th that's the first, um, or two of the yarns that I, I acquired. The second um, thing that I purchased uh, was this stuff it's very heavy it's uh, rayon metallic in Spanish dancer it's from blue heron yarns I had never heard from them heard of them before um, but it was so sparkly and it was pinkish reddish purple and those are my colors I and sparkly who doesn't love sparkly and so I this is 500 and 50 yards of DK weight yarn. Um, I believe it's just rayon, which is a synthetic material. But it's soft, and I don't know what I'm going to make with it yet. I mean, that's a lot of yardage for, you know, something so pretty. Uh, so I've been looking on Ravelry. What would you guys make with this? I know the. I'll post pictures on my. Um, page notes as well because then you'll get a better idea of what these look like but what would you make with this um, so that's that this is a DK weight and then the last yarn um, well, second to last yarn that I got I saw this across the way um, on the other side of the barn kind of and I'm like oh that's really pretty. These are um, like a dark teal and some maroons and greens and dark purples. Um, these aren't, I mean, they're kind of my colors, but I like usually like more bright colors. But this, I, I don't know, it spoke to me. So I went and I got it. Um, this is from doo -doo 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 -doo, Argo, Argyle Fiber Mill. Um, it's the broom corn house blend. It's a um, worsted weight and has about 200 yards. Not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet, but sometimes I think I collect yarn more than I actually knit it. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. You guys collect yarn too, right? Um, they're just so pretty. So that's that. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it either. What I was really, really, really excited about um, was this last set of purchases. I've been wanting to learn how to dye yarn for quite some time now. Um, just never took the plunge to get some undyed yarn or um, anything to use to color it. And so one of my goals was when I went down on Friday was to look for um, just ideas for um, dyeing my own yarn. So I stopped at a booth and I was just passing by but it was alpaca and I had to pet it and I found 660 yards of they told me it was worsted weight yarn um, 
I don't know. It looks like it could be a little thinner to me. Anyways, of this undyed alpaca yarn. And, oh, I could just sleep with this. I really could. I could just, you know, cuddle up like a teddy bear and sleep with this alpaca because it's just it's so squishy. Anyways, so I got this undyed yarn. Um, 660 yards, which is a lot of yardage. Um, I'm sure I'll find something for it. Because I also got... These acid dyes um, from Jacquard. Sounds French. Um, and I got it in uh, Hot Fuchsia, uh, Violet, and Sapphire Blue. And I think I'm just going to do one color for this yarn because I think that will give it the most justice. And I think I'm going to do the Sapphire Blue. And depending on the gauge of the yarn, um, if it is truly a worsted weight yarn, there is this um, pattern on Ravelry that I want to make of a sweater. And it requires um, two or three different colors. It's more of like an ombre knit. I think it's called Katie um, by Ombre Knit. I will definitely correct that if I'm wrong. Um, so I thought, oh, make it the sapphire blue and then find two other colors to pair with it just so I have enough yardage to make um, the sweater um, according to the size that I need and the yardage needed. So those are my Yarny Acquires um, at Cheap and Wool. I, I could have spent all the money in the world there. There were so many things that I wanted. There were spinning wheels and I really, really want to learn how to spin. Um, yeah, I just, there's so much that I wanted. Um, so those, that was my Sheep and Wool Festival. Um, another exciting thing, um, things I acquired this weekend um, was on Saturday. I went down to Milwaukee, which is about 45 minutes to an hour away from where I live um, for Freight Arts um, Celebration of Life Picnic. Um, the Celebration of Life Picnic is... Um, a celebration to honor those who have donated organs, living and deceased, um, those who have received um, organs, which I am a um, liver transplant recipient myself, and um, just their caregivers and just to honor us. Um, and so it was, this is the third year that I've gone, I'm going on three years, um, January 1st will be my three year anniversary for my um, liver transplant. So it's always exciting to go down um, to this event and uh, connect with others who have also gone through the transplant journey because it is a journey that not many people would understand unless they actually went through it. Or um, and yeah, even personally, if you've not gone through a transplant, you just it's it's hard to explain to others other people um, the feelings and. Um, everything that goes with it. So uh, Saturday was the third um, picnic that I've gone to and I um, there's always there's all these booths at the end. Um, usually it's the beginning one. This year it was at the end and I got a few cool um, little things um, that I just I don't know I like to I'd like to share with you guys if you guys don't mind. Um, I got let me just get it all up here. Okay. So, every year I get the Donate Life um, wristband. Uh, it's kind of like the Live Strong uh, feeling of the wristbands. Um, and it just says Donate Life on there. And it's, it's, you know, I've got three of them now, but they get worn out and I don't always wear them. It's just they're nice to have um, to show your support for organ donation. Um, I also got this pin that says, yes, I will donate. Um, and that was at, uh, I think it was the Kidney Foundation booth. Um, I got my, um, this is at the Donate Life um, booth, and it's, 
says donate life and it says uh, recipient because I am obviously a recipient. Uh, they had just regular donate life ones for non-recipients uh, just to show their support. It also got, this guy fell down here, <laughs> excuse me, whoops, sorry, you got really close there for a second, the stress ball. In this stress ball, I think I have it, yeah, it's shaped like a liver. Isn't that weird? I mean, it's probably not the actual size, but this is what I had replaced in me. Um, they had different squish balls for different, uh, or stress balls, for different, um, organs that were transplanted. So some people, you know, those who had received a kidney transplant, there was a kidney shaped one of these. And for heart and lungs, there was a heart and lung shaped one. I thought that was so neat. Um, yeah, so here's my little kidney, or excuse me, liver. Um, and then the last thing I got, I, not so much raising awareness for organ don donation, um, but this booth was there, it's there every year. Um, this group of people um, create organ-related art. Um, and they had coloring books this year, and um, t-shirts, and they had pins. And now this isn't an organ or anything, but I just loved, um, it's an olive, and it says, I love you. And uh, ben and I always say that to each other. We always say olive juice to each other. And so originally I had a brain picked out and then I saw this pin and I'm like, yeah, I gotta have it. And so, yeah, I got it. Um, some cool things about the event. I didn't win it though, but um, they were giving away tickets to have lunch with Oh, Randall Cobb, yes. Randall Cobb is um, Wisconsin's big supporter on, uh, who speaks about um, organ donation. And so this is the second year that he's offered um, lunch for four with Randall Cobb. Or he, you know, he's offered, you know, his time for that. And I thought that was really awesome. I was so close to winning that, I was off by four numbers. Four numbers! I couldn't believe it. I, you know, had put away my ticket because I'm like, ah, eh, I won't win. And then I heard, you know, it was like, the last, my last two numbers were 802 and it was 806 or 807, something like that. No, it was 806, yeah. And uh, I was just like, ah, oh, so close. So that's, and he also, um, have like a mini um, Packard helmet um, autograph that he donated, um, which I think is really awesome. I really think it's awesome to get or to see, you know, more influential people speaking out about something that I am so passionate about, such as, you know, organ donation, because had nobody, you know, signed their organ donation card, my lovely donor, I do not know who they are, um, but... I wouldn't be here for that, so um, I'm really grateful for, I'm really, really grateful for my donor, but I'm also grateful for um, anybody who raises awareness for organ donation because I think it's very, very important. I actually signed up to become a volunteer in my area, um, just finished the paperwork today, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, okay, I know some people kind of squeezy about organ donation and stuff so I will move on to the next thing what I am watching I um, am still watching French I'm on season four now um, and it gets weird it, the story changes so much sometimes and I'm like okay what's happening but it's really good and I really like it um, I'm yelling at it right now because they're forgetting a main character and I really want them to remember him again and I know they will um, just because I've seen all of up to season four so that is one thing I'm watching um, and then after like 10 million people telling me I should watch Stranger Things I totally demolished that show in one day well uh, one day and then an hour today I started it yesterday afternoon and it was really confusing at first. I'm like, what is going on here? 
I, I had no clue what was going on, and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, yeah. And so then I had to finish watching, um, watching it, but last night I got really tired. It was like, you know, 12 o'clock, and I had taken my medication, and I'm like, okay, I want to be able to be aware and understand what this last, you know, episode has, is all about. And it answered most of the questions, but there's so much still left unanswered. There's so much that I'm like, whoa, what about this? So I'm assuming that they are going to put on, you know, next season, hopefully soon, um, probably going to be a year, because that's usually how it goes. Uh, yeah. So those, that's the, you know, two shows that I'm, like, um, one show that I'm actively watching, one show that I completely demolished within, you know, a few hours. Um, I finished it this morning. Um, and then I just picked up Gilmore Girls again. Um, been I watched Kiki Girls and it's a lot. And they talk about it. And so I had to, um, I had to watch it. You know, start watching it. So I'm watching that. Um, and then every night I watch How I Met Your Mother because... How I Met Your Mother never gets old for me. I have probably seen that show more than a dozen times. I don't know, it's just, it doesn't get old for me. And some people, you know, they're like, eh, I can't, you know, it wasn't that great, but I love it. So, that, those are what I'm really watching right now. Um, I've been meaning to uh, pick up and read more of the Harry Potter books, um, along with the House Cup on Ravelry. I just haven't um, had the time. I babysit during the week, and this past week's been kind of uh, an emotional one for my um, husband. -ish. And um, so I've been more of a support for him, or trying to be at least. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I got for you guys today. I know, um, I know this is still br brand new to me, so please bear with me. Uh, I really hope uh, to learn more about you guys. You can find me again on Ravelry as Night Owl Knitter. There is also a Ravelry group, um, and that's the Night Owl Knits. Um, yeah, I will. Um, add anything that we talked about in the blog or the show notes um, and I'm always open to suggestions I'm open to um, questions anything um, I really 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 hope to um, get to know you guys so until the next time the night element I'll see you guys later